Hello everyone, back like we never left. We're here to talk about One Piece chapter 1004. Now, before I even read the chapter, you could tell it was gonna be a down chapter. There wasn't much chatter. People weren't saying, oh, avoid spoilers at all costs. You knew that something was different, right? So I was like, okay, maybe more than likely, Oda moved away from the rooftop and he did. Chapters like this are necessary. And even though it might not be as hype as, you know, chapter 1003 to 1000, but it's a necessary chapter to move forward the plot, to progress things, to give us an update as to where things were. I mean, we said this was going to happen, right? but we'll, we'll get into the chapter. But if you're here for the first time, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We do this damn near every day. Like the video as well. That helps me out a lot. And without further ado, let's delve into One Piece chapter 1004. Chapter's called Kibidango. And for this chapter, Speed is back. I always wondered how it was going to happen. That thing being, how was Oda going to have Tama use the Kibidango to get into the mouths of the gifters or just the smile users in general? How was he going to do it? And one thought, of course, a lot of people had this thought. It was Usopp firing Dango everywhere. That came to fruition. The speed thing I did not foresee, but that makes so much sense. Speed and the others that were serving Tama makes a lot of sense where because they're loyal to Tama, therefore they're going around and people trust them because some of them are officers, right? People with high standing. So they're like, oh, well, if speed is saying it, then it must be, we will take it. Some of them because speed is beautiful. <laughs> they're like, I'll, I'll take it. I trust you. Therefore converting people. And the good part about it is that this is something that we saw coming right and it's a logical way to dwindle down or whittle down the numbers a logical way very logical way based on what's been established in the story where tama has dango and a dango is used to whittle down kaido's forces because right now is 27k to 5k they need to close that gap quickly aside from tama's fruit and what it was able to do this chapter I i've said it before i'm a huge fan of tama i like tama I, I I resonate with her story, right? Because of Ace and Luffy and that connection to Tama. And even here, she's like, you know what? I want to see a, a Wano without Kaido, without Orochi, where I can eat as much as I would want to. And that resonates because early in Wano, she was a character that we got introduced to. We learned her story. We learned how much she sacrifices. And here again, she's sacrificing, producing as much Dango as possible for the cause. Tama is a character, very lovable, very sympathetic to her character. So I just want to see her happy, right? I just want to see Tama happy. But again, for the most part, this was an update chapter, giving us an idea of to, as to where things are. So I mentioned in my live reaction that I, in regards to intrigue, interest, hype, I had things on different scales, right? For number one, I had obviously the rooftop stuff. Everything going on up there, I am interested in. Take me back. Beneath that, we had who's who in Jinbei in my opinion, because there's some underlying things going on there. Who's who has a lot of portrayal in regards to being maybe the most, the most formidable scabbard, not scabbard, the most formidable, uh, Toby Ropo. After that, I had Marco and King was going on there. Marco, King and Queen. Cause I think that would be interesting. What's going on with the commanders because you know, uh, the CP zero, they talked about how important the executives are. So I was like, okay, Marco, King and Queen was going on there. After that, it'd be Yamato. What's going on with Yamato? Because she's fighting someone, not sure who it is. Beneath that, Sasaki and Frankie, because we love Sasaki. We love Frankie, right? And want to see how Frankie overcome Sasaki. Beneath that, you had the Sanji stuff. How Sanji can get out of that. Then everything else trickles in with Robin and Usopp and Ult. Those things. Oda understands that. Because we didn't see who was who in Jinbei in this chapter. And that's for good reason. Because that's what everybody wants to see. So Oda takes it from the bottom in regards to things that are maybe they're interesting. But not as interesting as what's going on with them. Because I think who's who and Jinbei is going to be some really good stuff. But the Sasuke and Frankie fight is going as expected. Two big bodies throwing themselves around fighting each other. Right? Where, you know, Frankie seems to have the upper hand. A lot of people do not, I don't think, view Frankie on that level as far as the toby ropo for some reason but frankie is strong frankie has shown time and time again that he can overcome situations and i think because of the new design the frankie shogun and just his uh, <laughs> his jovial nature people forget just how strong frankie is how resourceful he is as well so a lot of that going on this chapter a lot of the straw hats being resourceful not even straw hats alone but the, with tama 
being resourceful, helping the cause, doing the little things. Because in battle, right, the generals, the people that are doing major things, they're going to get a lot of props. But these people are doing the little things. Like, at the end of the day, Luffy and Zoro, they're going to get, you know, the people on the rooftop, they're going to get a lot of the credit in regards to what happens here. But what Robin does is essential. Frankie, Jimbe, Nami, Usopp, it's all important. And that's what this chapter is showing us. Something that made me chuckle, that made me, really made me laugh, was uh, when this guy was like, we're not your average foot soldier. We're gifters. <laughs> that, was, that was funny. I, th I, I thought that was hilarious. I don't know. But it's clear, though, the executives that were there, Sasuke is reiterating what CP0 said in regards to the numbers being important. And, and that's why that's where Tama comes in saying that she's there to whittle down the numbers and to even up the, the numbers to, to, to bridge that gap. But something that was unusually satisfying is Nami being able to land a hit on Ulti with her tempo. And again, this is something that I foresaw because it was just based on who were was still on the battlefield, it felt like Nami and Usopp, they have to overcome Page on Ulti. I think as lopsided as the fight was initially, it, it wasn't going to detract me or dissuade me in regards to thinking Nami and Usopp could overcome Page on Ulti because it reminds me of any of any lobby. They didn't have a chance against CP9 initially. Then, you know, they went from Warder 7 to any lobby and they got stronger, right? Of course, they didn't show their full capabilities, but they got stronger. And for Nami and Usopp, you know, even even Ulti saying again, we're going to cave your heads in. And Nami's like, no, not again, right? It, that felt really satisfying because it's, it's you're watching the crew grow. In the Frankie and Sasuke battle as well, we saw a decisive blow, a somewhat decisive blow. Frankie landed on Sasuke. So we'll see what comes of that. I, I still think that we see a hybrid form for every single one of the Toby Ropo and all these fights that's going on. It's just It just seems to be the case, right? So I don't think it, the fight is over, but I think it was a, a really impactful blow that Frankie landed there. Now, the major thing people are talking about is Sanji and Black Maria. That Oda went to Sanji and what, what Oda's doing is with Sanji is terrible. I'm not in that mind of thinking. Now, I do think the gag is redundant and it gets a bit old and we get it. You may even get to a point where you're questioning whether or not this scene was necessary. We're not there yet, though. I'm not sure if that moment where Sanji says not to underestimate Robin was supposed to be a, a, a rallying cry or something that was... Impact, it didn't impact me as much because again you're you're kind of focused on Sanji being in a, in a situation in which he could be helping a lot more right now. Sanji's one of our strongest fighters, and he's here stuck with Black Maria. So I, I think as a Sanji fan, it's not that bad in my opinion because he's here because he wanted to help some women, got caught up, and now he's stuck and needs help. I think the most intriguing thing from this entire scene. Right. I don't care about the Sanji being trash stuff. It's like you guys can feel how you want to feel. I don't agree with that. OK, these are things that's been established in the story. Sanji does not hit women, period. Sanji will not hit women. It's not going to happen. Something that people say a lot that I, I don't get it when people say that Sanji hasn't developed because he doesn't hit women where you think it would be development if he started to hit women and not regression. Okay, conversation for another day, but I understand some of this frustration comes from wanting to see Sanji be great, and he obviously can't be great in a situation like this. So Oda is putting Sanji in a situation in which he fails, but th this situation is not over. It's not recovered yet. Obviously, with Black Maria leaving, with Robin being there, I'm sure you guys know this Robin, right? We saw some communication, some type of communication between Sanji and that woman with the mask, and it would make more sense if Black Maria is about to leave. She's asking for Robin, and that's their job. To get Nico Robin. And we remember Kaido and Big Mom were talking about Robin in regards to their quest, their their their, their whole goal to find the One Piece. And they know they need Nico Robin. But Robin's right there. And they're asking for her. And Robin's going to come through and save Sanji. And Sanji can go on and help the others a bit more. King says he's tied up right now. It seems like the most logical conclusion is that he's tied up with Marco. Right? Which Marco is going to keep King at bay. I, I wonder for how long... We didn't see Marco here in this chapter, but that's, I mean, that's the only person I can see, you know, where King is like, I'm tied up. But he asked Black Maria to go and kill the samurai where Law transported them. But they mentioned that there's somebody else there with the scabbards, somebody else. And then we saw, we see a silhouette and people are speculating that, <laughs> well, there are a lot of speculations. The funniest one is an L, but I think people are mostly trolling. Like, <laughs> 
with NL is back. Guys, I'm telling you now, if NL came back to Wano, the last thing NL would care about is saving some scabbards. There's no connection, no possible way that they met. It's not an L. All right. And an L is not a smile user, so some Kibidango then f Okay, let me just stop entertaining that because it's not an L. People are saying for Kukuju. No way. No way. For Kukuju right now, I think has a Rochi's body, and I think that's what's going on over there. I think this person is clearly Toki or Hiori. One or the other. It's silhouetted. I don't think that matters. Oda, Oda just likes using silhouettes. He said that himself. I don't think it matters if it's silhouette or not. It could be Hiori. could be Toki. And I think Oda put the hair strand where he did on purpose to make us speculate. Now, people are saying the nose looks male. The face looks a lot more masculine. And I could see that. Where, But, but the logical names that come to mind, personally, Hiori. Toki. Someone's like, yo, it's not Hiyori or Toki, it's Kumurasaki. I'm like, God. <laughs> That's my speculation in regards to who this is. I'm sure you're going to see a lot of speculation. People are going to have different things, but I think the most logical, based on the silhouette, based on a picture of Toki, just look at a picture of Toki, or even Hiyori. They have the hair strand coming down. It's not an L. It's not for Grikuju. It could be somebody else. Could be. The face does look a bit masculine. People say Yamato. No, Yamato. That's not Yamato. Why would Yamato be there? So, and she's far away based on the last time we saw her. So we'll see. But guys, give me your thoughts. How do you feel about the chapter? Again, a fine chapter, serviceable chapter. It, it feels like a precipitous drop because of what happened in the last three or four chapters. Feels like, you know, like, man, we just went away from the hype. We're going to go back there, but you can't just stay there. While these developments are going on, Oda has to wrap up other things. Now, unfortunately, we're on break next week. So, you know, I'll try my best to keep you guys entertained. You know, the anime episode will be reacted to. You know, we have our analysis. We have some very interesting topics that I didn't talk about this week. Just to do a bit more research and find out a bit more things. But I have some interesting things I want to talk to you guys about this week. So, you know, we'll, we'll do that. But guys, let me know what you think. Make sure to like the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter at BragoDAce. Follow me on Instagram at BragoD.Ace. Thank you to my patrons. I appreciate all you guys so much. Guys, in like, subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Yeah. Okay, I start doubting me, I felt lost. I rewrite.